It's exactly a week from now before we enter the month of October. Many thanks for joining me for the Tuesday edition of Primetime News. It's always a pleasure having you. I'm Salima Shimwefeleni Masipa. Leading tonight's bulletin, the 49 households who have been voluntarily repatriated from Botswana will be allocated residential plots on a piece of land cleared for their reception outside Gum in the Oshodonjupa region. Welcoming the returnees to the site on Saturday, Agriculture and Land Reform Minister Kale Schlettwein pledged the government's support towards them, noting that all vital services will be allocated to make their stay at the reception site comfortable. The land, located some two kilometers outside Gum, is solely reserved for the returnees, including the ones to come in the next round. It is planned that the piece of land will eventually become an extension of the Gum settlement, which itself started as a reception center for returning Namibians who made their way back to Namibia from Botswana between 1992 and 1996. Welcoming the returnees to the site, Agriculture and Land Reform Minister Kale Schleidven informed the returnees that the government will take care of their basic needs for food, sanitation and water provision whilst at the reception centre. We will look after them for three months okay. and then we will see how they, mm -hmm. where they land and where we can help. Mm -hmm. But the registration of children for schools, mm -hmm. for elderly, for pension, mm -hmm. um, for land and so on, that, that is all done at the reception area okay. and we will do that as quickly as possible. Schleidwein encouraged the group to already put in the application for all social amenities the government provides such as old age pension, disability and welfare grants to make their stay in the country comfortable. Staying atop the repatriation of Namibians from Botswana. Namibia's oldest political movement, the South West Africa National Union, also known as SWANU, has raised concerns around the repatriation of Botswana of Namibian descent, noting that more needs to be done to fully integrate them into society. Speaking to Primetime News on the sidelines of the official welcoming ceremony of returning Namibians, SWANU President Evalistus Karonda said his party worries that the returnees are merely being transplanted into Namibia instead of being allowed to fully integrate. More from this insert. One would have hoped that <clears throat> already in 1993 to 1994 when GAM and, and you know, were created to receive our people from Botswana, that uh, conditions would have been made or provisions would have been made to receive our people and accommodate them and give them a dignified um, ways of life and not just have them transplanted uh, from Botswana into the Namibian uh, you know, social life without the necessary uh, absorptive measures. One does not know what the future would hold for these Namibians who have returned. Uh, do they face the same fate as that faced by those who came before them? Or do they stand a better chance of um, having a better um, you know, economic life here? Um, so it's a good thing that our people are back. One would have hoped that more and more of them would, you know, would come back so that they come back home. But the question always that I think that the, the Namibian government needs to answer is what, what exactly are people coming home to? The United States proposal to support two new permanent seats on the influential UN Security Council without veto power is a disingenuous attempt to maintain Africa's marginalization. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, reaffirmed her government's position on expanding the Security Council in a speech to the Council on Foreign Relations on 13 September 2024. The non-accord of veto power to African permanent representatives in the Security Council has elicited mixed reactions, particularly within the continent. A former Namibian ambassador to the United Nations, Kaire Mbuende, described the proposal as an attempt to maintain a dual-class membership system 
within the Security Council. Mbuyende told Primetime News that Africa's position has always been either you abolish veto power or everybody there can be a permanent member without veto power or you extend veto power to those new members on the Security Council. He added that there cannot be two classes of members of the Security Council, one with veto powers, one without. That is totally unacceptable. Mbuyende stressed that has been the African position and the position of Namibia that veto power is either abolished because we think in many cases it is undemocratic. The reform of the United Nations Security Council has become one of the most debated issues leading up to the Summit of the Future held on the 22nd to the 23rd of September 2024 in New York, the United States. On his part, former UN Assistant Secretary General for Political Affairs, Tulia Meni Kalomo said that the proposal for an African permanent seat without veto power is an attempt to appease Africans. Kalomo, who also served as Namibian ambassador to the United States, said Africa's position as one for equality of all permanent members of the Security Council, that Africa's position is encapsulated in the Ezulwini consensus. Reporting for Primetime News, I'm Michael Madimba. Elsewhere, the National Council Standing Committee on Transport, Infrastructure and Housing is visiting Rwanda to learn from the country's parliament about policies and laws related to urban land and housing provision. Prior to this visit, the committee had meetings with regional councils and local authorities to discuss these issues. Uh, because in African countries, we have the similar things that we have a higher uh, rural urban immigrations. The people immigrate to the towns looking for the better lives, either for works and so on. And then we have the similar situation that houses become a problem. We find our people in uh, the shacks and the informal settlements, and then all our Africans want to reduce such setups in our. Uh, local authority so that our people have a better house. So that's why we are here to share ideas with our colleagues. Then we are very much happy that the last person is welcomed us in this very important event for us. We are going to stay uh, almost a week here, then uh, there and there. As indicated by our committee names, that we have a task on transport and also infrastructure and housing. When we talk about housing, we talk about uh, house unities. The people and also Stay tuned for your top roundup with a business segment thereafter. Welcome to the Primetime Biz segment, the slot encapsulating business and economics. President Nangolo Mbumba said Namibia and Germany's shared history, though marked by complexities, has not hindered the ability to co-chair the PACs for the future summit held at the 79th United Nations General Assembly underway in New York, United States of America. The two countries who share post-colonialism history, where Germany occupied the then Southwest Africa, now Namibia, from 1884 to 1915, co-chaired the summit on 22 to 23 September 2024, where 193 member states vowed to move towards achieving the UN's sustainable goals and the Paris Agreement commitments on climate change. More on the story filed by Linnea Dishena. The two countries who share post-colonialism history where Germany occupied the then Southwest Africa, now Namibia, 
from 1884 to 1915, co-chaired the summit on 22 to 23 September 2024, where 193 member states vowed to move towards achieving the UN Sustainable Goals, also known as SDGs, and the Paris Agreement commitments on climate change. Given his welcoming remarks at the summit on Monday, President Mumba said the shared history did not hinder the ability to work on a shared future rooted in mutual understanding, trust and cooperation. He said today they stand united proud of the outcome of the summit and determined to move forward with hope. Mbumba say the summit will help restore the multilateral system and trust between member states as challenges faced including climate change, inequalities and poverty are far too vast and complex for any one nation to tackle alone. He said the pact for the future stands as a statement to the spirit of fraternity and mutual responsibility in tackling shared challenges. The United Nations General Assembly opened on the 10th of September 2024 with the first day of the high-level general debate convened on Tuesday and will continue through to 28 September before concluding on the 30th of September 2024. Reporting for Primetime News, I'm Michael Matimba. Moving on, City of Bremen Mayor Dr. Andreas Boven Schulte has emphasized the importance of reconciliation with Namibia as a historical and moral responsibility. He stated that the topic will continue to be crucial in the partnership between Vintuk and Bremen. He made the remarks during a public lecture on leader in local authority governance in Vintuk this morning. Boven Schulte and his delegation are currently on a four-day visit to the city of Vintuk. I am very much convinced a decisive basis for closer cooperation between Africa and Europe is the reappraisal and recognition of Europe's colonial history in Africa and the crimes of this period, as well as the reconciliation and restitution of stone objects the reburial of ancestors and their societies of origin. This is a prerequisite for a future oriented partnership between Africa and Europe, even beyond the former colonies. Especially, especially we as Germans face up and have to face up to our responsibility in view of the atrocities committed by the so-called German Protection Force against the Herero Nama ethnic groups, which we must clearly label as genocide. Reconciliation with Namibia remains an indispensable task for us that arises from our historical and moral responsibility. The envisaged reconciliation agreement can only be the prelude to a joint process of coming to terms with our past and you can be reassured this topic always will play a crucial and important role in the partnership of Wintook and Bremen. Welcome to Sport Planet, the segment dedicated to all things sporting action. We begin with rugby. Fly half Manny Lebok was a surprise choice as South Africa made nine changes for a rugby championships title decider against Argentina in Mombela on Saturday. The final round showdown will see Locke Eben Etzebeth win a record 128th Springboks cap overtaking fellow forward Victor Matfield. 
Lebok and Etzebeth are promoted after coming off the bench last Saturday when South Africa lost 29-28 to, to Argentina after a thriller in Santiago del Estero. The other changes include three in the back line with wing Cheslin Colbe, centre Damien de Allende and scrum half Jaden Hendrickse chosen. Captain Sia Colisi, who will play with a fractured nose, fellow flanker Peter Steff Dutoit, props France, Malhaber and hooker Bongi Mbonambi are recalled to the pack. Coach Rassi Erasmus gambled last weekend by fielding an experimental team and it would have paid off had Lebok not missed a 35-meter penalty from a slight angle in the last minute. On to European football. Eric Ten Hag has warned the increasing number of fixtures will leave top players facing an almost unavoidable risk of injury as Manchester United head into their opening game of the New Look Europa League. Expanded European events and next summer's extended Club World Cup have led to growing concerns about players' workloads. Manchester City midfielder Rodri suggested it was possible players could go on strike in protest at the growing fixture congestion just days before the Spain star reportedly suffered a season-ending knee injury. United begin their European campaign at home to Twente on Wednesday in a 36-team Europa League league phase which sees each club play eight matches. Your Sports Roundup is up next. This is where we dock for tonight. It's been a pleasure having you. So make sure you catch us same place and time. Before I forget, kindly follow the on-screen prompts to stay abreast with happenings on the local, continental and international fronts. From myself, Salima Shumwefeleni Masipa, and the entire creative force behind the scenes, it's good night.